Hey everyone, this is Nick DeRobertis teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be doing an introduction to free cash flows. This is part of our lecture segment on free cash flow estimation and forecasting, which follows on to our previous lecture segment on the weighted average cost of capital. Putting these two lecture segments together, we will develop the discounted cash flow valuation of a stock. So getting into the free cash flows. So we have already gone through basically one half of the DCF model where we um, got the weighted average cost of capital. How much does the company have to pay in order to raise money for their operations? So the other half of the DCF model is focused on the free cash flows so that ultimately we can take the present value of future free cash flows in order to determine the value of the business. So within that free cash flow side of the DCF model, we can even decompose it into two further parts. And that is first uh, finding the historical free cash flows. So you have the historical financial statements, income statement, balance sheet, perhaps statement of cash flows, and you calculate the free cash flows from those financial statements. And this part is fairly straightforward. Uh, you're just kind of going through the formulas in order to calculate these things. There's no real uh, decision making to be done in the matter, no kind of qualitative analysis. You just do the calculations. The other part, which is more complicated and difficult, is to project the free cash flows into the future. Remember that when considering the value of an asset, we only consider future cash flows which are going to be paid. We don't care about the historical. So uh, we calculate the historical just in that it will help us project the future, but the future is what we really care about for the valuation. So there's a lot of decisions to be made in how you forecast the future free cash flows. And we'll talk about a variety of different approaches and uh, the conditions under which you would might want to use some of these different approaches. Uh, and we'll get into all of that within the forecasting material within this lecture. But before we get there, um, let me just give a quick introduction on free cash flows themselves. So what are free cash flows and why do we care about them? So free cash flows, we can think of as the cash that the company is getting from their operations. They have some revenue come in, they have to pay for expenses, salaries, cost of goods sold, the inventory, uh, etc. And then they end up with some amount of cash left over after paying for all those operations. So that would be the free cash flows. And so some people can get this confused with net income because they think, well, isn't that what net income is? The cash that's left over after you paid for expenses. Um, but these are a little bit different. So net income is a measure that was developed by accountants, which helps smooth out irregularities in uh, the company's earnings, um, especially around expenses, which represent investments in like fixed goods and things like that, which uh, are going to be used over a long time span. So maybe the company purchases a new a new warehouse. Uh, they're going to use that warehouse over the next fifteen years. For net income, we would say, just as an example, there are different ways to account for it, but uh, one fifteenth of the cost is going to accrue to each year in the net income. Try and say, well, let's let's match up the expense with the usage of the asset to kind of smooth out uh, the earnings. So in contrast, uh, free cash flows do not do any of this smoothing. Uh, 
it's all about the actual cash, which is trading hands, uh, you know, electronic or physical cash. Um, so if they purchase a building, which they're going to use over 15 years with free cash flows, all of that expense is coming in the year where they actually purchased the building. So it's, it's when was the cash actually spent, not when is the asset going to be used? Um, so why do we care about free cash flow over net income for valuation? So free cash flow is what is actually going on with the cash. And so that's what we want to consider for the valuation. Um, net income is still useful to think about in terms of thinking about what is kind of a typical amount that the company would earn in a given year, um, considering smoothing out costs across multiple years. But when we're thinking about valuation, we always want to use free cash flows because that's what actually happens. Um, and we want to be using the truth for our valuation. Investors care about when they're going to get that cash. The timing of it is important. Um, and so we always use free cash flows for valuation. And free cash flows um, represent uh, the earnings from the operations. And then those free cash flows go to service both debt and equity holders. So uh, free cash flows are used to pay interest on the debt. Uh, and they're also used to pay dividends or uh, go into retained earnings and increase the value of equity that way. So um, when we take the present value of free cash flows, what we get is the enterprise value or the entire uh, full asset value of the firm. And then we can decompose that further into the debt value and equity value of the firm as we covered in the prior lecture series. So thinking about calculating the historical free cash flows. So there's a number of different approaches which are equivalent. Um, we're going to go through a way in this course that only requires the income statement and balance sheet so that you don't even have to work with the statement of cash flows. But certainly there are methods which use the statement of cash flows as well. Um, and so this is the basic formula shown here on the right. And in the, the next video, we'll go into a lot more detail on this. Um, but basically, we're just taking this formula and we're just going to calculate it for each year of historical data. Um, but it is kind of a multi-level calculation in that each of these three components, which we are going to use to adjust the net income, they each have to be calculated on their own before we can go and do the historical free cash flow calculation. And the philosophy uh, behind this formula is that we are uh, taking this net income, which accountants have adjusted, and we're going to reverse the adjustments that they've made and also include what they've excluded as far as uh, capital expenditures, these large purchases which are being spread over multiple years. Um, so by doing these adjustments, we'll be able to get back to the actual cash coming from the operations, the free cash flows. And then thinking about the other side of free cash flows in the DCF model, we need to forecast them into the future. And this is definitely the more challenging part because the historical free cash flows are a very mechanical thing. You just do the calculation and you're done. But with forecasting, uh, there's a lot of decisions you have to make as the modeler. Uh, and you wanna use knowledge you have about the company in order to make those decisions. So we can broadly break down at the highest level uh, of how to forecast the free cash flows into two methods. And that is forecasting free cash flows 
directly or forecasting the financial statements. Um, and forecasting free cash flows, you only have to forecast one thing. And so it's very easy and quick to do, but it's typically going to not be able to be as accurate uh, unless this is a company that has very stable free cash flows. Uh, but generally, what you're going to want to do is forecast the financial statements uh, because that uh, gives you a much greater level of detail into the company's operations. And then uh, once you've decided on what you're going to forecast, either the financial statements or the free cash flows, then there are a lot of ways to go about that forecasting exercise. Um, so generally, generally we're going to look at time series methods in order to do the forecasts, and we'll talk a lot of, more about what that means in the following videos. Um, but basically different models that we can use to predict the future from the past. Um, and then even aside from those models, even after we've already decided what we're forecasting, there's still another decision to make, which is uh, what, what we're going to forecast within that item. Are we going to forecast the level of the item, the growth of the item, or are we going to peg it to another item and forecast the percentage? Um, so we'll dig into all these different uh, decisions and uh, the considerations you want to make in those decisions and uh, how you would actually go through each one of these approaches and calculate them. So all of that come in this lecture series. And the last part of the lecture series, we'll also look at how to finish up the DCF model with everything else that we've learned from the prior lecture series. So thanks for listening and see you next time.